case of Gosu, I mean, obviously they all they have other great players, but taking down the uh, or chopping the head off the uh, the monster there definitely makes it easier to take down. So we'll have a PVP here starting in just a moment. Yeah, so it will be Hasu versus Huan Sing. It is going to be Christmas colors as Hasu is choosing the green Protoss. Meanwhile, Huan Sing uh, choosing the red Protoss. So red versus green here on MLG Shadow Temple as we wait for the spawning locations and figure out what's going down. And we have Huan Sing spawning at the 6 o'clock location as the red Protoss. Meanwhile, all the way at the other end of the map, we see Hasu spawning as the green Protoss. And this will, in fact, be full cross spawns. Yeah, I mean, the close positions by air don't usually come into play in PvP all that much, uh, just because we don't see a lot of air in PvP. I know some players go for a Phoenix style going into the mid-game, try to do some harassment, maybe picking up some Immortals at different points in time. That's a fun style, but definitely not the norm at this point. Hopefully we see more air play in this matchup uh, at some point, as it just needs to be a bit more uh, diverse of a matchup. We see just a lot of gateway pushes and timings usually a lot of one base play as well so i'd love to see some stargate but don't think we'll see it in this game or any other uh anytime soon yeah i don't think we'll see it anytime soon either as both players pretty much neck and neck in terms of their build hasu this time around not going for that nine probe scout as we saw um, last week and so i think he'll be a little bit on a little bit better on equal footing in, in, when moving into the mid game as we now see a gateway both players coming in and hasu may have studied Huan Sing's build and perhaps trying to execute it and perhaps trying to use it against his opponent. We'll see how and when these players' builds actually start to deviate from each other and who will be able to micro better. I mean, Protoss standard build is, again, pretty standard. Uh, there aren't a lot of deviations like in the other matchups. So you are going to get down that gateway, you're going to get down your simulator, then cybernetics core. From there, really, it's that second production building in which they place down which can matter if you place down an immediate second gateway usually means it's not a four gate players tend to like to add all three gateways at once get out a uh, you know a pylon or two or some scouting done and then uh, get those gateways out right before the the warp gate finishes or if they throw down a, uh, a gateway first like both players have done and then a robotics we could see a, a robotics opening which I think is definitely one of those builds needs to be fleshed out a little bit more, especially as it can hold off gateway pressure, getting out an early immortal against those stalkers. So again, both players, we should be looking at that second production building. Yeah, we really should be looking at that second production building. And now we see a little bit of a de deviation. Huan Sing going for an, a, a Zealot. So we are getting an earlier Zealot coming over him from Huan Sing. Meanwhile, Hasu opting to get that gateway a little bit earlier. And I think Hasu will be getting out a Stalker and Chrono boosting that warp gate um, as soon as possible. You're going to see a probe now walk into the ramp and um, pretty much take a look inside the base of Hasu. Meanwhile, the same thing is happening over here in the base of Huan Sing. The probe is forced to pull back. And both players pretty much doing the same exact build. Um, the energy on the side, uh, energy on the next is pretty similar as well. I think Hasu did use a Chrono Boost on that Stalker, while Huan Sing did not use a Chrono Boost on his Zealot or his Stalker. Yeah, Hasu coming out with a build, it's uh, pretty anti foregate What you do is you get these Stalkers out, and you use them to roam around and search for pylons. And Hasu's going to find one here. Huan Sing placing up a pylon. I think he will cancel it as soon as the first or second shot goes off here from the uh, the Stalker, so I imagine the cancel will be coming in. But uh, Hasu, again, oh, wow, he's Whoa. once in allowing that to finish. I'm not sure whether that's a smart move here. We do have a Zealot coming across the field, ready to defend it, but another Stalker coming out for Hasu. In fact, two Stalkers, so three Stalkers going to be coming out here, and we'll see whether he tries to focus down. He needs to get these pylons down, cannot allow those to finish. Yeah, the pylon, one pylon most likely will get canceled. Another probe is back over here. That one probe is going to perhaps warp in another pylon once again. This one pylon, the shields did start to recharge once again, as we'll see what's going to be happening here. One probe, one stalker, one zealot testing that front, and Hasu getting a little bit of an advantage right now. Seeing that 25 over 34 food, Gosu Huan Sing is upside down on food, unable to warp in any units, as that warp gate tech about to be completed. Completed, and Hasu may be able to take this very small advantage and perhaps make something of it. 
Juan Sin is throwing up an expansion, something we hardly ever see in PvP, especially this early. So basically he's got Hasu a little bit scared here. Hasu's back in his base with these Stalkers. He got out these four gateways, perhaps to go defensive four gate, as he did see the pressure, the uh, units moving across the field. Now we see a little bit of an encounter here. It's uh, three Stalkers versus three Stalkers, but the one uh, Zealot there are going to be forcing Hasu to micro back. As we see, uh, one of the laggers there lose, or moving uh, or leaving the game. But now we've got a little bit more of a deviation as a robotics about to finish for Juan Sin and a Twilight Council about to finish for Hasu. Yeah, I think what happened with Juan Sin was Juan Sin realized that he was not going to be able to spend his resources nearly as efficiently as he wanted to since he lost that proxy pylon. By losing that proxy pylon, he wasn't able to get in a round of warp ins and he had to spend those minerals and he thought, okay, let me try for an expansion. If this game does go long, he will be in a very, very nice position, but it's really going to see, uh, it's really going to come down to the micro of Hasu who is now getting blink versus the immortals. And I believe those immortals are currently being are they be yes they are currently being chrono boosted out so that one immortal will be very very difficult to deal with yeah i think hasu is definitely gonna have a timing here where he's gonna have just more units than uh wansin but wansin is gonna have that immortal with some good focus fire and micro you can focus just one immortal down once you get to the two or three range you know they can start doing a lot of damage as we see hasu pushing out here with these stalkers blink about to finish so he's gonna have to have excellent micro here he sees the expansion finished here for wansin and if this attack does not work for hasu i feel like he's just gonna be too far behind yeah hasu is right now waiting for that pylon and i know that he needs to wait for those pylons for those reinforcements but he also doesn't have that many minerals in the bank so he may not be able to actually warp in that many units one additional stalker perhaps two at the most as another proxy pylon about to be completed there are two immortals to deal with and that is a problem but the immortal is going to get focused down one immortal does get focused down and there's the blink from hasu nicely done but a couple zealots being left behind that's no good as the stalkers and Hasu really needs to be careful, perhaps reposition them, let those shields naturally recharge, and then rinse and repeat. He needs to do this absolutely perfectly. Yeah, he really needs to micro individually here with these Stalkers and blink them back. He really can't afford to blink back his entire group. Yeah, uh, you need a lot of firepower going off here. He's got to whittle down this army, use that blink to perfection as we see another mass blink. And this is just giving Wansin more and more of an opportunity to come out with these Immortals. A third one about to come out. And Wansin is working off these two bases. He has the same number of harvesters as Hasu, but just mining more efficiently as we have another battle here. Those immortals not focusing down these stalkers, just now focusing them down as they were taking down the uh, front two zealots that Hasu did bring in here. And now I think Hasu is going to be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, Hasu right now, he does have a decent amount of stalkers, getting two more stalkers, and he's going to once again try to rinse and repeat and do this again. It looks like some stalkers are getting destroyed, but they are blinking back as well. Hasu not quite sure what's going on there as one stalker walked in and just head on into that position. Things are not looking good. Hasu really needs to um, perhaps micro a little bit better. He does have a lot of shields to use, but he has to be really careful every time he pushes in, and he has to be very careful. One immortal may get taken down. That immortal down to, whoa, 37 hit points, but those shields are going to recharge as Juan Singh most likely will pull back with this one immortal. Four immortals now and Hasu is basically all in with this build. The four, fourth immortal came out and I think that's going to be an end to the game here. Yeah, we're going to see Stalkers now trying to push in. Once again, the Immortal did take a lot of damage, but we also see a proxy pylon being warped in by Huan Sing on the far side of the map. And if four Zealots make their way into the base of Hasu, it is essentially over. He is chrono boosting his warp gates to try to get in, in as many units as possible. And we'll see if this is going to work or not for him as the Immortals have recovered a lot of their shields already. Yeah, and I think Wansin making a little bit of a mistake here. Needs to get those Immortals out in front. Some of them aren't able to engage here in these battles, and Hasu trying to trade effectively, but that pylon now finishing. We'll see whether Wansin uh, chronos out a warp gate and gets a few Zealots up into the mineral line of Hasu at that point. Basically going to force Hasu's hand as we see five Immortals out now, so... Hasu, I don't think, has any chance with this pressure. Needs to go home and defend, go for some sort of miracle uh, mid-game, perhaps, here, as we do see two Zealots in the mineral line of Hasu, going to force them to engage. Yeah, the Stalkers are now going to be pushing in right now, going to try to shut down all of those Immortals. Some Immortals are getting focused down, but I think the Immortals' burst damage is just simply too much. All the Stalkers are going to run home as the Probes are now attempting to run away as well. The Probes are going to have a little bit of reinforcement, or act as a reinforcement for those Zealots, as Hasu running off of one base compared to Huan Sing's two bases. 
It is 24 probes versus 16 right now. So even though Huan Sing does have his expansion up, it, it, there isn't that big of a discrepancy. But Hasu does say GG. Yeah, so I mean, Hasu maybe 